Welcome to Gold Derby's Film Cinematography Panel. I am Senior Editor Marcus James Dixon, and we are here with Lena Sandgren from Saltburn. And first things first, I'm, I'm curious about the discussions that went on behind the scenes regarding the, the four by three aspect ratio of the film, making it more like a television screen than a film screen. And I've seen Emerald talk about this, but I would, I would love to hear your perspective as well. Hmm. Well, um, exactly, you know, like, I think the aspect ratio is important. Uh, so it's always like you you have these discussions early on. I think she she felt that she wanted it to feel a bit like you're peeking into this dollhouse because uh, a huge part of this film is taking place in, in this manner, right? Like this English Gothic uh, manner. So, and, and, and she wanted the film to feel like voyeuristic and that we're looking into this like peeking in. So for her, it felt like square. But in the discussions, um, there's so many things to discuss, right? But kind of uh, early on as well with the entire look of the film, I, you know, I'm asking her a lot of questions about if she could provide me with like words or with uh, metaphors or, or things, whatever that that is that just comes to her mind. And in these discussions, she kind of came in on this that this film is sort of um, kind of a vampire film and being a vampire film in that realm that we started to explore then with like visual references i felt like um paintings um from you know uh, the baroque era or like the the the, the old um, 20s sort of german expressionistic um, silent movies um have have sort of that kind of vibe of um of 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 of, of something that could create a, you know kind of interesting compositions i thought like interesting compositions and it has a relationship between both the sort of um, that gothic house and the paintings how they were painted these families that the family that lived there has always been painted in these paintings so so all together it kind of made most sense for us to go with 133 which uh to me is more like actually just a full frame um you know super 35 and 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 kind of reminds me of the the classic ways they did silent movies and it kind of fit the theme in general i thought like to 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 do it that way but we we did go back and forth between like thinking also about the benefits of of wider formats but why we eventually uh, honed in on the one uh, 133 was to um, what was when we discussed the the, the details of uh, close-ups and details because she was very much into seeing a lot of sweat a lot of hair a lot of like close-up on things so we had we sort of created this uh, language of either it was like composed um kind of formal com formally composed simple shots of 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 of, of the scenes or you go in on like really tight details. And when you go in on tight details in 240, for example, I feel like you see off the subject um, kind of, and in, in the square format, you go more like in on exactly what you wanna, wanna, wanna see and you focus in on something in the center. So, but th there's always like many reasons I think behind, it's just important in the beginning to discuss all of that and, and sort of try to make the right choices and, and not just make a choice for for whatever reason, but like to have something, <laughs> think about something, uh, why you why you do it. But so I think it was a combination of things that somehow between her original uh, vision and how I, 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 I sort of felt like we should illustrate it from her point of view's vision, then it sort of came into that uh, format and, and the lighting and everything is kind of connected, I think. And do you remember what your reaction was the first time you arrived at this beautiful location, this mansion? And were you already at that moment thinking about shots and angles that you could use in the picture? Um, I mean, I, I thought it was stunning. Very much of that, of what you see in the film is is the actual house. Uh, we did some um, uh, set builds just for for practical reasons to to connect uh, the bathroom with the two um, um, bedrooms. But but in general, I I thought it was uh, incredible. I mean, it's it's a museum. You know, you can go into that room and take anything to to the antique roadshow. You know, it's just like insane. 
and and what what was interesting to me was like how how inspiring it was because they had a lot of like really obscure weird paintings uh, 300 year old paintings of dead children and they had like in the garden they had like this statue of a man hammering down on another man you know and and it's like kind of interesting um how the art looked like back then um so we obviously yeah i mean you when we walked around we we hadn't storyboarded the film or or so but we had an idea of that um the the, the sort of painterly composition so so we went in to to look at angles from that point of view kind of thing but then when you see something like their staircase uh, they had this they had two staircases both were kind of incredible uh, one was full of mural like beautiful old paintings old paintings and the other one was just a very unique spiral staircase that for some reason i think don't really exist much elsewhere it's like a very unique uh, construction and we just want to use everything we we want to like utilize everything so i think within the house we're we're moving around quite quite good um so yeah i mean it, it it's a huge part of the of the story and and inherent sort of in the way the story is told the house is sort of meant to feel like it's keeping um keeping a mystery or keeping keeping some uh, secrets right so so we and and we were never actually wanting to see the house um, in broad daylight either. We kind of Emerald always wanted the house to feel like kind of exposed, uh, like they did in like the Baroque paintings, uh, you know, like type of kind of Caravaggio style where the light comes from outside the windows and 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 hits in, and then you expose for sort of the the sun more than the the shadows, you know. So so all of that is obviously also something you consider when you walk around in a house but it had i mean it had so much to to give us like so make it much easier for us to to actually shoot the film uh, thanks to the house a lot yeah it was like a character in the movie as mm. easily um and barry cogan's new dancing scene at the end this is something that's going to be discussed for years to come how do you approach such a vulnerable scene like that as a cinematographer how do you where do you start um well first of all i feel like you always i always feel like i want to tell the emotional story and like consider the emotions in the scenes uh, more than the actual plot like so he he wakes up and walks through the house right like that could be and it's joyful but what's the emotion here and he's sort of king of the castle and um oh I mean, how much can we talk about this shot? But, but um, without saying too much, then then I think anyway, um, I kind of felt like, uh, which I mean, both me and Emerald felt because we did the scene towards the end of the shoot, and we had already done a lot of scenes that are those scenes that are much more um, um, sort of um, strange and, and special, and so this scene was nothing else but like. He was vulnerable, but at the same time, he's sort of king of the castle. So he is kind of an extrovert with himself, but it wasn't about adding to it. Because I feel like in throughout the whole film versus other films that sometimes you want the camera to be very um, uh, sort of active, right? Like tell the story, uh, make the audience feel. I feel like we were more voyeuristic and tried to compose shots that you could sit in and hopefully you are sort of seducing the audience with the acting and the, the composition is just letting you watch it. And you could go in on details for, for sort of uh, as a thing, but otherwise you kind of just want to observe and then let the audience judge um, if, you know, if how, what you can tolerate and what you like. But in this case, same thing. I feel like it was his, he's by himself and we're just observing him like very simple um walking through the house but i mean we're traveling through the house but he's dancing so but it's really happening in in the reality of the film it's not like a, a you know a, a superficial dance number it's more like he's actually just having a great day right so so i think um, less is more in little bit in this film 
with in terms of like how much the camera is involved and rather we focused more on like in general in the film to uh, sort of light the scenes from outside and and create um sort of compositions that that um, we could stay in for as long as possible or like tell the story as efficient as possible and not sort of shooting it coverage style but rather um thoughtfully composed kind of thing so that was kind of a little bit different from how i normally um think of things but that came out of yeah out of the discussions early on how we wanted to approach the film to to make the most emotional uh, storytelling but but yeah so but that was a fun scene to do and it was actually not at all any strange for us because we had done so many other scenes that were more strange so uh, <laughs> it, it was more like a just a a, a great feel. we wanted it to feel like a great feeling for you know which could be awkward for the audience uh, as well i think it's probably double uh, what you feel about the scene well um, Lina, thank you so much for taking us uh, inside saltburn and and stick around we'll talk to you in a little bit in the group panel sure